welcome back children in today's session we are going to begin with part 2 of economics paper that is indian economic development in that part 2 we are going to learn chapter 6 that is rural development the name of the chapter is rural development now from the name itself it is very clear that we are going to learn the topic development of the rural areas now the total indian population resides both in the urban areas as well as in the rural areas and we know the fact that the rural areas are still lagging behind in the developmental process now in this chapter we are going to learn what all measures are taken by the government to uplift the rural areas what all developmental activities are taken by the government to uplift the rural areas now you know that majority of the people in the rural areas they depend on the agriculture now the contribution of agriculture to the gdp that is very important and you have learned that in chapter 2 of indian economic development and i can just remind you regarding that the term is structural composition it means the contribution of each and every sector to gdp and that is very important and the contribution of agricultural sector to the gdp mainly comes from the rural areas so not only agricultural development we are going to concentrate the whole development of the rural areas will be discussed in this particular chapter so we will move on to this chapter in detail now first we will learn about the definition of rural development what is meant by rural development rural development refers to continuous and comprehensive socio economic process attempting to improve all the aspects of rural life all kinds continuous and comprehensive socio economic process means socio economic measures social as well as economic measures continuous social and economic measures taken by the government to improve the life of the rural people so rural development means a continuous and comprehensive socio economic both social as well as economic measures taken by the government to improve the life of the people in the rural areas that is a definition of rural development so rural development refers to continuous and comprehensive socio economic process or measures attempting that means attempt is made by the government to improve all the aspects of rural life next is meaning of rural development in detail we learned about the definition of rural development now we will learn what all aspects come in the topic rural development in that definition rural development what all aspects are discussed point number 1 in the rural area rural people accounts for 3 fourth of the total population so 3 fourth of the total population lives in the rural area so from that you can just imagine what is the importance of rural development second point agriculture is the main source of livelihood so the people who are living in the rural areas their main source of livelihood is agriculture then next is with more than two thirds of population depending on it so more than two thirds of the population are depending on agriculture so what is the need for the rural development from these two points it is very clear that there is a need for rural development so we can just recollect the points once again rural people accounts for 3/4 of the total population of our country majority of the people who are living in the rural areas depend on agriculture for their livelihood point number 3 rural development thus means not only agricultural development but development in all the aspects which improves the quality of life so i told you in the beginning itself whenever we speak about rural development what comes to your mind is only the agricultural development no but along with the agricultural development there are some other areas where people need to get uh, improved so that helps for the total improvement or improvement in the quality of life so rural development not only means development in the agricultural sector i agree that majority of the people 
depend on farming and agriculture is their main source of livelihood but apart from that there are so many other areas where people need to get improved so agricultural sorry rural development means not only agricultural development but development of all other areas for improving the quality of life so when you think about rural development not only agricultural development should come to your mind along with that there are so many other areas where improvement is required so in this chapter we will be discussing about all those aspects the few terms which i can tell you is credit facilities the most important thing that people need diversification of activities not only farming apart from that people should be engaged in other activities too all these can improve the living conditions of the people so all these are the important points that we are going to discuss in this particular chapter now let us move on to the next topic process of rural development what are the different process of rural development now what is this rural development what are the process involved in the rural development now point number 1 is development of human resources with what all we can achieve the rural development or what are the process of economic development the first process is development of human resources now development of human resources if the human beings have to become valuable resource two important things should be is required the two important things are health and education now literacy i can use the word education health and education are the two important things required for a human being to become a resource you know majority of the people in the rural areas they are illiterate therefore it is necessary that the people in the rural areas should be provided education another important thing you know that there are no well developed hospitals in the rural areas therefore government should take measures to increase the number of health centers in the rural areas because health and education are the two important factors which makes human beings a resource so process of the rural development the first important process should be development of human resource provide proper health and education for the people in the rural areas because you know that a healthy person is always an asset for the community but a sick person is always a liability for the community so health and education should be improved for the people in the rural areas point number 2 development of infrastructure all kinds of infrastructure facilities especially in the agricultural sector because you know majority of the people depend on agriculture in the rural areas therefore farmers should be given all uh, farmers should be given enough measures to improve in the agricultural sector example electricity then hiv seeds application of hiv seeds irrigation facilities electricity so that the machines and uh, machines will be working then roads good roads has to be given then agricultural research centers then subsidies for fertilizers and seeds then credit facilities all these are the basic infrastructure facilities that has to be provided for the farmers in the rural areas subsidies should be provided because the farmers will not have enough money with them so whatever they are getting from the open market apart from that a part of this a part uh, from that whatever they are getting from the market they should be able to get the agricultural products sorry the fertilizers and hiv seeds at a lesser rate than what they are getting from the market so subsidies should be provided for them you know what is the meaning of subsidies isn't it the farmers will be provided the fertilizers and seeds at a lesser rate than what they are getting from the market so that subsidy should be provided by the government for farmers then credit facilities you know that for agricultural process investment is required for buying the hiv seeds for buying chemical fertilizers machines farmers need money 
they won't be having the money with them but they have to be given credit facilities they have to be given the short term and long term loans at a lower rate of interest so this helps them to improve their agricultural process then comes irrigation supply of water to the agricultural field is known as irrigation proper irrigation facilities should be provided to the farmers where there is no good amount of water then agricultural research centers so all these infrastructure facilities should be provided by the government that comes the process of rural development then comes land reforms the term is very familiar to you we have learned regarding the land reforms in chapter 2 of indian economic development now let us see what all things comes under the land reforms point number 1 elimination of exploitation you know that the in the olden days the rich landlords and the small farmers the poor farmers will be cultivating in the land of the rich landlords so a kind of exploitation takes place there instead of that exploitation the land should be given to the actual tiller or actual owner that comes a second point so these two points can be connected so when the land is given to the actual owner this kind of exploitation can be eliminated otherwise there will be a difference between rich landlords and the poor farmers you know that most of the cases the poor farmers they will be made use of the rich landlords okay so when the land is given to the actual owners of the land the problem of exploitation can be eliminated otherwise the rich will remain rich and poor will remain poor always the poor farmers will be working under the land of rich landlords then comes widening the land base the farmers to get the minimum productivity from land they should be given enough amount of land there are small and poor farmers who have who have, owns only a little amount of land so their land base has to be increased then only the productivity can be increased so that they will be able to sell the surplus amount of their agricultural production in the market then comes increasing the agricultural productivity and production now this point can be connected to this last point which i have discussed increasing the agricultural productivity and production what is the difference between agricultural productivity and the production agricultural productivity means we measure per hectare of land it is measured with the contribution made by each and every farmer from the land he has agricultural production refers to the overall production of crops done by the farmers so each and every farmer should be given favorable condition to increase his productivity that will reflect in the total production of agriculture so increasing the productivity and the production so what has to be done to increase the productivity give proper infrastructure facilities for the farmers such as credit facilities subsidies irrigation facilities short term and long term loans etc has to be provided to the farmers to increase the productivity along with that widening the land base of farmers these two can help in increasing the productivity and thus it can lead to increase in the agricultural production now next is allevi alleviation of poverty elimination of poverty you know that most of the farmers in the rural areas they suffer from poverty you have learned so many stories with regard to the farmers in the rural areas in class 9 economics now majority of them they do their cultivation by taking the loans or borrowing the money from the money lenders which they have to provide which they have to give high rate of interest so towards the end whatever they sell in the market that will not be enough for them to repay the in amount that they have borrowed from the money lenders along with the rate of interest so most of them will commit suicide and majority of them will live in poverty so government should find more and more strong measures in order to create a favorable condition 
to the farmers of the rural areas so alleviation of poverty is one of the major process of rural development then comes development of productive resources now farmers should be should not be engaged not only really in the agricultural field apart from that in what all areas farmers can be engaged with that is diversification of other activities not only really cultivating on land but also they should be able to engage in other activities now i am not going into detail with diversification of activities now because we will be learning the topic diversification in this chapter itself so this particular point development of productive resources means the farmers should not only really engage in cultivation of land they also should be engaged in some other creative activities apart from cultivation apart from farming so all these are the important process of rural development so process of rural development once again i'll repeat for you development of human resources development of infrastructure third point land reforms then next is alleviation of poverty and the last one is development of productive resources now we will go to the next point that is rural credit the most important aspect with regard to agricultural activity especially with regard to the rural farmers so the next topic is rural credit rural credit is one of the most important factor which contribute to the agricultural production now what is this credit facility i told you most of the farmers they will not have the money with them to spend initially on the agriculture so they need money from different sources so sources of money is the next topic that we are going to learn sources of rural credit there are two sources of rural credit that is institutional sources and non institutional sources now you have learned this topic in a detailed manner in class 9 as well as in class 10 so when i explain this particular point to you you can recollect what all things you have learned in class 9 and 10 economics institutional and non institutional sources now first we will discuss with non institutional sources non institutional sources now which are the non institutional sources from which the farmers get credit facilities point number 1 is from money lenders money lenders you know they are the people who give money to the farmers at a very higher rate of interest whenever they are in need of money so what will be the condition the farmers have to repay the amount in the harvesting season with the rate of interest that is fixed by the money lenders so definitely you know that the rate of interest which is fixed by the money lenders will be very high so some of the farmers will be able to repay the amount majority of the farmers will not be able to repay the amount due to the problems that they are facing in the agricultural sector point number 2 relatives the farmers can borrow money from the relatives now the money they are borrowing from the relatives they will not possess the rate of interest so it will be under the condition that they have to repay the amount after a certain period of time say for 6 months or 4 months or 1 uh, year etc so that is not a risky factor the borrowing of money from the family members now next one is traders and commission agents they also provide loan to the farmers based on the mortgage of their crops produced by them that means they have to sell it is on the condition that during the harvesting season when they get the crops they have to sell these crops for farmers farmers have to sell these crops to these agents at a lesser price that is the condition of the third one that is traders and commission agents they will be providing the farmers with money whenever they are in need but they have to sell the crops to these agents at a lesser price next point is rich landlords rich landlords is almost the same as that of money lenders they also give money to the 
farmers but at a higher rate of interest so the first and the last one is very risky and the third trade and commission agents that in also involves a risky factor for the farmers and the point number 2 that is family members and relatives now regarding the family members and relatives the risk factor is not there because it does not possess a right of interest but majority of them will not have money with them so that is only a last source of credit for the farmers because every everyone in the family will be farmers so the source of getting the credit from the second point that is very less there is only less chance of getting the money from the relatives it does not possess any rate of interest it has no risk but the possibility of getting the money from the relatives a chance is very less and the higher rate of interest which is fixed by the money lenders and rich land landlords it is a very risky factor for the farmers so government has to find a source for the credit facilities to the farmers so that most of the discussion of institutional sources of credit which will be continued in the next video thank you